All right, this is my Ham Radio Go box that I've been working on. Uh, finally, took a little time the other day to uh, pretty much get most of it together. I still have a lot more to do, um, as I'll go over in this video, but um, but so far the, the basic principle of it is together, and I, the radio is functional, and, and communication-wise it's completely functional. Um, I opted for a Harbor Freight, uh, what's called the Apache 3800 box. Um, I think this was like 30 some dollars, maybe just shy of 40. Um, and it's got big heavy duty latches, very, very strong. I mean, this thing is really built well. Uh, it's like a Pelican case. It's built extremely well. I was very, very, very impressed with this. Um, you have metal latch hoops here for, um, uh, for padlocks on both sides. They're metal reinforced, as you can see. Uh, you got your big, uh, big latches that, that actually snap down pretty well and they stay real tight. I mean, they're, they're, they're on there. Um, you even have a pressure equalizing valve here. So it makes it easier to open the case. The case is completely waterproof, which is great. You have a, a gasket, very good quality gasket in here. It just gets pinched right in here. Uh, to keep water out and everything. So those of you that don't know what a ham radio go box is, it's a <clears throat> a usually waterproof ruggedized case uh, with an onboard battery and everything for uh, ham radio equipment. And uh, you know the m most basic form of it contains typically a battery transceiver, and it's like I said. Um, it's just mounted inside this case. So uh, with mine, I have a couple couple more goodies and features. As you can see, my 7-inch LCD screen right here, uh, which I'll go over that in a, uh, in a little bit. So this took me a little while to make. Um, and the reason why is because I really couldn't find a case that I was happy with, uh, as well as a way to do it. Uh, and then I, you know, Harbor Freight actually just happened to come out with these cases um, during this project, you know, when I was looking for cases, I, I actually ended up buying like three or four different cases. Then I saw this one at Harbor Freight and I go to Harbor Freight, you know, every once in a while. And I, I hadn't seen them until I went there and boom, they were right there on the shelf. You could tell they were brand new. And I was extremely impressed. I actually, originally I bought the medium size one. This is the large size. I bought the medium size. And then I just, uh, I decided that, you know what, I, I'm going to put more systems in this thing. I want some more room. So I got the big one. Um, the case comes with uh, cell cellular foam, cellular foam, um, which is it's like block foam. Uh, it's it's inserts that are in the box. The whole thing's full of it, and it's layers. And you can actually pick it apart to to fit things in. So, like if you had a camera, you could actually in the foam. Obviously, right now I, I have a plate here, but normally in the foam. Um, this is just the, the foam for the cover, so this wouldn't have it, but it's this type of foam, and it's already got it's already kind of pre-cut a little. It's still stuck together as one piece, but what you do is you pull it out, and there's small little blocks in there so you could fit something in. So, like, for example, if, if I wanted to fit the screen in, I could just pull out the blocks that were in the shape of the screen, and it would fit right in. Uh, so I actually, and, and that, that ended up really coming in handy with mounting the battery and everything inside here, um, and, uh, and even the radio. So actually underneath this, where there's not space taken up by the radio or any of the components, uh, it's all cellular cellular foam. I don't know why I can't say that. Cellular foam. And uh, it, it really just keeps everything sturdy. You don't have to glue everything down and all. It keeps everything in place, and it does something else too. It almost makes it uh, sort of shock resistant, which is really what you want for something durable like this um, in the environment that it's going to be working in. So, um, the basic components, of course, are the transceiver, my radio right here. This is 25 watts of power, uh, more than most handhelds. And uh, I was going to actually put a 60 watt in here, but I, I like this radio in particular. It's the QYT KT7900D. Let's see if you can see that right there. Hold on. There we go. And the reason I like this radio is it's a quad band. It's not a quad standby, it's a quad band. So you could talk on almost any VHF, UHF channel shy of, you know, 500 megahertz, obviously. So it goes to from the 100-ish megahertz 
up through the 200-ish, 300, into the 400, uh, you know, UHF. And the cool thing about that is a lot of military satellites are on the uh, twos and three hundreds, so it's really nice to to be able to do that because ma that's the main reason I actually built this was for uh, satellite communication because I really I really like working satellites and it's just really nice to get that extra bit of power out when you're doing it um, as opposed to a handheld. So um, yeah, got the panel here. This is a marine panel, and uh, it's it has circuit breakers instead of fuses, um, which you know have their ups and downs. You know, the downside is uh, a circuit breaker can fail very easily, especially these. Um, a fuse is never going to fail uh, for the most part. Uh, but the reason I wanted circuit breakers is because if I'm out somewhere communicating, and you know, I have an issue that's not major and it just does overload it just a little bit. I, let's say, let's say I had fuses and I pop the fuse. I'm, I'm screwed. I mean, I could carry spare fuses. Yes, but you, you know, you ne you never know. It's just nice to ha have a circuit breaker, uh, especially in, for emergency equipment. Like I consider this. Um, so with the panel here, I have instruments, DC outlets, instrument lights and VHF. Uh, the reason I have VHF rather than VHF, UHF or radio or transceiver or anything is because, uh, I'm assuming because this is a Marine panel, uh, and Marine, uh, Marine, uh, stuff uses VHF mainly, uh, that I guess that's why it, it has that. But so if I go ahead and hit this switch, you see it turns on VHF lights up and there goes my radio. My radio is now on. And you can actually see on there, I have it on the space station frequencies as well as a 220. And my, the bomb one is one of my local repeaters. Um, I'm going to turn that off. And then I have instrument lights, which I don't have this hooked up yet. But if you look right in here, there is a LED strip. And it actually projects down very nicely, uh, a dim red light. So it's not blinding if you're working at night. Um, and it projects down over the whole panel so you could see everything. Um, I don't have it hooked to the actual switch yet, but um, then I have DC outlets. Now, two USB plugs right here. I hit DC outlets. You'll see I have my USB plugs right here for charging. And I have my voltage, which we are currently at 12.6 volts. Shut that down. And then instruments. Instruments are going to be this, the monitor, and I'm going to put a computer inside of here, a Raspberry Pi computer, very, very tiny computer, and it's going to be mounted just underneath here, um, and actually where this Velcro is, right here, I have, let's move this, where this Velcro is, is where the keyboard's going to go. So this is a very small wireless keyboard, it's going to mount to the Velcro, I have my touchpad here, then... So I'll be able to control everything through the computer. Originally, what I was going to do was uh, I was going to put in like a, a Morse code, you know, a CW uh, reader and all in here. You're going to have a little panel that would help interpret it hooked into the radio. A um, bunch of other small systems built into the box. And then I realized, well, you know what? I could just get a very small computer uh, like a Raspberry Pi and I could put all those programs on there and not only use them to interpret things, but send out, you know, all sorts of stuff. I could send out packet radio transmissions, everything just from one device rather than having a million separate devices. Um, another thing that's amazing about having a computer is if you're familiar with one of these guys, a SDR software defined radio receiver. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'll actually have this mounted underneath the panel somewhere. I even might take it out of the box, so it's just a small circuit board. I'll mount it somewhere in there and hook it into the computer. So, and the computer screen is going to be this screen right here. So that way, I can uh, I can monitor my SDR and everything, my software defined radio, right on this screen here. Everything will just be in one system, nice and compact. And uh, I, th I really think that's the way to go, as far as what I'm looking for. Um, for the computer, I got this. Now this this is another uh, small pod like like these, and I'm gonna put the other one probably right here. And what this is, hold on, is it'll have uh, audio plug 
for the computer, and then I'll have a USB to plug into the computer because the the SDR receiver is going to be underneath plugged in, so I'm not going to really need to access the plug on it. Um, but, you know, if, if I'm hooking in, let's say, a flash drive or something in the computer, it's just nice to have that port right up here. Um, so that's not really going to be for charging. It's just, it's mainly going to be, I mean, you could charge something off of it, but unlike these that are purely just power, that one's going to be to interface with the computer. So, um, so that's where I'm at so far. I, I don't have the screen hooked up yet, the screen or the, uh, the light, like I said, but I'm going to wait for the computer to come. So you make sure everything's all worked out before I do that. Um, and the, the keyboard I have is actually exactly the same as the one I just had here, but instead it has a, a backlit display, so all the keys light up. Um, and then right here I have my power. This is just hooked directly to the um, the battery that's under here. The battery is a 12 volt, 7.5 uh, amp hour battery. Um, and these hook, this right here hooks directly into it. So I don't have my charger hooked up yet, but I can just hook to, to these terminals uh, to charge it. And it's... You know, no big deal. You just have to keep the case open. Now, um, speaking of keeping the case open or shut, what I did was I put my jack for my antenna on the outside with a waterproof cap with a gasket in there. You can see it goes right through the right through the case. I took some RTV uh, silicone, put it around here when I when I screwed it on. And uh, that'll keep that water tight. So that way, what I can do is when this is hooked to an antenna, I can close the case. Like, let's say it starts pouring rain or something, and I'm, you know, I'm using it intermittently. I can just close the case, and it'll stay, you know, hooked up. I don't have to unhook the antenna every single time I want to close or open the case. Um, so I'm also going to put over here... Another smaller one, um, an SMA connector. I think I have, yeah, something similar to that right here on this antenna. So I'm going to have a connector like this, very small one, and it's going to go either, you know, above it somewhere on the side, some, something like that. And that'll be for the SDR um, and a, or any type of scanner or something like that to hook into. Not necessarily for transmitting, um, which you could, but... Um, so I'm going to do that. And the nice thing about the, the small connector on the side is I can actually put like something similar to a Wi-Fi antenna on there, and depending on what frequency I'm using. And I could actually leave it right on the side of the case. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then I also have a uh, small DC uh, weatherproof round plug for a charger. So that's going to be somewhere over here too. And you'll just plug it right into the side. When you take it out, it's got a little rubber... Little rubber uh, insert that goes in there to stop water from getting in. So that way the case doesn't have to be opened. It could be closed for all its external connections, uh, for charging, for antennas, for everything. You don't have to keep it open. I've seen a lot of people that uh, they have their, their connectors all in here and you have to run all these wires over the case into it. And I don't like that because if you're set up somewhere at, you know, you make a small base camp or something, you know, at, at some point you're going to have to close this. Um, you know, depending on weather, if you're not using it, it's just nice to close it and protect it. I mean, that's the whole point of having the equipment inside the cases to keep it protected. So, so I, that's why I opted to, uh, to make all my antenna connections and such outside. So, yeah. Um, what else? Um, I, I haven't done the finishing touches on this yet. I'm going to wait till everything's together and working. Um, around the edge, you can see the edge isn't really perfect, um, especially around the transceiver if you look here Let's see that um, I do have like rubber trim pieces that I'm gonna put in I'm gonna fill in this hole that I accidentally drilled and uh, and some other stuff to really just make it look nice um, this I'm gonna put some sort of grommet in because this is where the the wires are gonna come down for the screen and the light are gonna come out of here and go down into there um, I'm going to try and make it look professional, but I'm going to wait until I get everything together and working, and then I'll worry about cosmetics. Um, I got two big stainless steel Phillips heads um, that are screwed into uh, threaded uh, threaded pieces about this long that I have glued inside the box with some super high-strength glue. Um, if that fails to work for whatever reason and they don't end up staying there, I'm going to actually drill holes in the bottom of the box and make sure I seal them. 
um, and then put another bolt going through the bottom or another screw to tighten it. But we'll see what happens. So far, it's they're they're pretty sturdy. It's been pretty good. They're not actually they're not even screwed down all the way right now, just because I was working on it. But uh, but yeah. So basically, uh, underneath here, I have the battery, which probably takes probably about this wide, about that deep. Um, so the battery takes up like this whole portion here. So in this area here, I have enough room to put my Raspberry Pi computer, uh, my SDR, and anything else I can need. Um, I still need to put a, a, a charger in there, um, but I should have more than enough room in this area here, which is why I actually built it like that. I built everything off to this side, so I had a nice big area for the computer and everything. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll go pretty good. Um, not sure I'm going to have to see how it unfolds, but I, I might end up putting in some sort of grate up here with a like a ventilation fan or down here or something, but we'll see when the uh, time comes. So uh, I know that this radio has a built-in fan, and uh, I mean, it, it, it has enough room back here that I'm not worried about. I think it'll be totally fine um, running air through there. Um, but the computer also has a very small fan on it, but we'll see what happens. Uh, like I said, if it becomes an issue, I'll deal with it. But if not, yeah, just nice. It uh, Like I said, it came together very well so far, so very happy with it. It's, it's really not that heavy, nice and light, waterproof. Um, I have not worked any satellites with it yet, but I hope to do it very soon. And uh, it'll be nice because I'll have a, my satellite tracking program right on there. And I'll literally be able to watch them as they come over. So, yep, hope you like it. Thanks.